Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Thanks for joining us in today's video. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future content. While you're here, give our video a like and make sure to leave us a comment with any questions you may have or suggestions for an upcoming video. If you'd like a more in-depth look into our trading day, we would love for you to join us in our live trade room for three days with a free trial. A link for that you can find right in the registration uh, of the comments below there. Uh, and that will be in the descriptions. That'll bring you right to it. Or, of course, you can always just go to www.ssftg.com. So let's get into today. Uh, today's topic is going to be candle by candle psychology. I know you guys love these. And this is going to be something that I would like to make more of a regular staple uh, throughout the week as as we go through just to kind of give us an idea of what the morning session did so we can get ready for the afternoon session, uh, which should be kind of interesting, maybe even moving this to a live stream as well. So first things first, coming into today and kind of keeping an eye on what's going on candle by candle. Well, we have to go back and kind of see what happened before, right? What are we actually coming into? Looking at the first bar today, and this is the S&P, the MES 1220 on a five minute chart if you wanted to follow along. Uh, really good practice, by the way. Side note, if you want to work on your market psychology reading, uh, you can actually go in and adjust your right side margin by right clicking and going into the properties. And then setting your right side margin to something like 750. And that way you can go forward and arrow by arrow, you can go backward and forward candle by candle uh, to make it a little bit easier to practice, just as a, a little side note for you. So looking at the first thing uh, really is that we have a gap up, right? Now this gap up, we don't have any context on it. So where is that gap coming from? Well, that's where we look back at yesterday. Yesterday's move had a gap down. They closed here and opened here, but they quickly filled that gap and then rolled all the way down when they tried to come up they failed rolled down to a new low but as soon as it hit that new low it's pretty obvious uh, that the market <laughs> bounced right back up again with basically a lower low and then a reversal uh, kind of looks like a w down here and now going back up we're opening with a gap higher and we're kind of opening in no man's land there's nothing really up here uh, to really work with we've got some support resistance maybe but that didn't do a whole lot last time and if anything we're opening up directly on top of it so coming into today, right out of the gates, we're already kind of seeming a little bit more bearish than you would initially maybe think. Uh, now, looking at a little bit more context here, the first candle is also very strong. It's a very nice bear bar to the downside. Now, I know I already clicked the arrow, so I'm not going to use this next one to cheat, but seeing this consolidation going into the next one, uh, it really kind of exemplifies, wait a minute, what's going on, right? We're opening on top of resistance, but we're not really in the middle of anywhere. You know, what's uh, <laughs> what, what does the market want to do here? We need a little bit more of a clearer signal. So a lot of traders will wait. There may be some sellers who are looking to sell underneath that bear bar uh, because we're opening up on top of resistance, but they never got triggered in. Uh, this bull bar just kind of hung out, really didn't do much and, and sort of paused. Now the next candle breaks down a little bit further and they're starting to give a little bit more of a clue. Like, hey, maybe this is starting to go a little bit more bearish. Uh, we've got sellers trying to push in. This is only the first 15 minutes of the day. This is where things get a little bit whippy, but they're trying to get something going. It's not the most consistent thing in the world. If it was consistent, then we would have three stacked bear bars right next to each other and there'd be no questioning. In this case though, we've got a breakdown, a pause, and another breakdown. So that leads the question of, well, are they just gonna pause again? Or are they gonna keep going? Not a lot of traders are really going to look at this thinking, ooh man, this is a, this is a, a really, really great short. Uh, because realistically, we're not seeing that emphasis. We're not seeing that strength. There's nothing showing that sellers are trying to gain any movement to the downside yet. So a lot of traders will wait. There may be some aggressive sellers who are looking to sell underneath this bear bar. But if that's the approach, they've got to understand that they're dealing with a lower probability scenario. So looking for larger reward makes a lot of sense, right? If they're selling here, their stops are probably above the highs. And that means that their targets naturally can't they can't necessarily go here because it's low probability and that's one to one that doesn't fit risk reward so a lot of traders even if they do want to short don't necessarily want to short down here it's just a really kind of awkward placing uh, to try to get something going and then the next candle goes straight back up with a giant bull engulfing candle uh, and that doesn't necessarily shift anything per se other than the sellers already knew that they were kind of not really interested we didn't see a whole lot of follow through after bar one into two two consolidated bar three and now it has a full-blown reversal 
all the sellers were already on the sidelines. There might be a few that are trapped, but not enough to necessarily fuel a big move. And that means that a lot of traders still have cash in their accounts to try to push the market one way or another. They're flat. They're waiting for something. Now they have something. We have a big bull engulfing move. And more importantly, because all of these were weak signals, right? This little tiny breakout, it's the S&P. So this probably wasn't worth that much anyway, uh, in terms of distance lately, it's not too bad, I guess. But you know, the breakout sellers were the only ones that really got in and the other sellers that did got stuck. So knowing that they got stuck, where are they going to put their stops? Well, they might put them above that bear bar. If it goes bull engulfing, nobody's going to want that or above the bull engulfing trigger or above the highs. And this gives us kind of a three spacing. These two are kind of close together. So a lot of traders might just opt to go above the bull engulfing candle and just accept a couple extra ticks of risk. Uh, but the highs, that's going to be the next one. And with such a strong reversal back up, I'm going to have a hard time believing that buyers aren't going to want to try to follow this through at least a little bit. A zone of interest sometimes on this because it is a bull engulfing candle that shut down the sellers. A lot of sellers will sell below and then they'll try to sell above it trying to get out somewhere in the middle, right? Trying to get a break even uh, somewhere inside of there. And if they're if they're feeling like they're stuck enough, they may even sell more to get their average up. But a little inside pullback to like the 50% of that bull bar might be kind of nice if they can get it going. I just don't know if they'll be able to do that. Either way, buyers will be trying to come in. It's forcing them to buy high, right? We've got a really, really strong bull bar and the sellers haven't really proved much. So they are buying high, which is a bummer. But at the same time, with this much strength, if it goes, it's probably going to go fast. And if it doesn't go, the loss is probably going to be relatively mitigated. So it's a nice opportunity for buyers to try to come in with reduced risk looking for narrower targets. This is where those one-to-one -one traders are going to be coming in, right? Buying above this bull bar and then looking for targets uh, with a one-to-one, -one, right? So if we go from the top to the bottom, Mine is currently set to two to one. That's what I prefer. But if we go one to one, their upside objectives are going to be looking for around 33, 13 quarter. And that's going to be the main kind of zone that they're going to be trying to push for. Now, it doesn't mean that it can't go further than that. And there may be some clues as we get more candles, but that's the primary objective at the moment. <clears throat> We go into the next bar, really strong continuation. It doesn't even look like they pulled back that 50%. I wanted to see them dip a little bit further. 50% would have probably been around here. Uh, either way, though, we've got really good continuation to the upside, and buyers are showing, uh, they're showing some pretty good conviction. Are they breaking out above the highs? Yes. Is it a good breakout where the body is actually closing about halfway through the breakout point? Yes. Uh Everything is kind of ticking the boxes in terms of seeing where they want to go. The one big nervous factor that we've got going on here is this move down that failed from the sellers. We know a lot of sellers didn't necessarily get trapped, and that means that the market doesn't necessarily have to pull back. There's nobody that needs to get out of break even, really. Everyone's already kind of gotten out of the way. Uh, if it does pull back, that's great, but realistically, there's nothing really holding the market down, and this isn't going to scare buyers to do anything other than hold on for a little bit more. Now we go into the next one, it's an inside bull bar. We still haven't reached the objective yet, but an inside bull bar after such a strong move, that is definitely going to catch some people's attention. Like, well, wait a minute, hey, you know, I, I might be able to uh, jump in this move. I missed the initial entry and they never pulled back, but maybe I can get an inside breakout to finish the job. So this is where scalpers will come in above the high, just looking for that quick scalp to finish the move off and they're in, out, and they're happy, right? That's all they're really looking for. The rest of the buyers who are long on bar four are looking for a little bit more continuation to the upside to finish the job and see if they can keep it going up there. But this inside bar, that's not going to really entice anybody to do anything. Buyers might buy above the highs, but no buyer who's already in is going to be nervous. If anything, if it dips below this inside bar, that would be a reason for buyers to buy underneath as a trap, assuming that, hey, we're probably still going up. Now, further, if we look at the volume, the volume at the open is sometimes unreliable. Obviously, there's a lot of volume at the open. But if we kind of look at what's been going on now since we have a few candles, we can see the market did rise higher with some good volume. And ever since then, the volume has been decreasing. That's a good sign because that shows us that the highs aren't necessarily in yet. There's nobody taking big chunks of profit yet. That's a great sign. So if we can get a little more continuation to the upside of that breakout going, we'll probably be able to finish that one-to-one -one objective and maybe keep going a little bit further.
Okay, a little bit further. So they broke out above the highs and they completed that objective. And that objective test, this is now where a lot of traders who were long are going to start liquidating positions. Now, I'm not saying exiting everything, but this is where we're probably going to see a pullback. Realistically, it would make sense to see a pullback here. And now that we have a little bit more confirmation, we also have a little bit of candle gapping. Right? We've got the high of that bull bar at the bottom, and then we've got the low of that inside bull bar, which gives some candle gapping that we can utilize as a measuring tool as well to kind of give us or gauge another zone that we might be able to use. So if we just copy paste this guy and then move that up, that gives us a one to one objective a little bit further, 3319, and that would be the candle gap objective. The one-to-one -one objective has already been reached, but if traders are looking for runners or trying to get some larger targets, that's going to be the next one. And they're going to be targeting around 1875. And likely that's where we're going to see a potential pullback. Where we are right now, it wouldn't be a surprise to see a bear bar here because we have buyers taking profit and nobody got trapped on the lows really. So the only pullback that would be happening is everybody that's in the market. So the pullback might be uh, actually pretty strong. We'll just kind of have to wait and see. It's already reached the one-to-one -one objective. Buyers are going to be taking profit regardless. Now it's just a matter of seeing how much further uh, it really wants to go. So if we go beyond that, now we have a bear bar. And that's a, that's a pretty heavy bear bar. That's a strong uh, bar to the downside showing, you know, hey, that, that was a heavy rejection. This might be a twin reversal where we're trying to get a reversal off of the highs. But the big key to this is that we still have open candle gapping to the upside. That hasn't been invalidated. And even though this is a twin reversal, buyers are still very strong and there aren't any sellers that got trapped. Remember, when sellers are trapped, they'll try to push the market down to get out of the position. But if not many of them are trapped, there's not gonna really be anybody to push the market down that far. So realistically, this pullback looks strong, but the underlying psychology of it is kind of weak. There's not really a reason to expect a pullback here. And if anything, if it dips below that previous bull bar, there's just gonna be buyers waiting there. That's just a retest of the previous breakout point. And if you wanna look at it as a break-even retest, the buyers who bought that breakout, guess where we are again? We're back. It's time to reload. So I still, I don't like this from the bear's perspective. There's too many reasons to like the bull's case because of potential continuation. It makes a lot more sense. And that's exactly what they got. A really nice bull bar to the upside. And it was nothing but a trap on the lows. And this is great because before we didn't have any traps down here, at least none that were that big. But now we have a really strong rally up. Sellers who are trying to potentially sell where the high may be. And now they're getting trapped strong bar to the upside and we just came off of a strong rally do you think the seller is going to be hanging out very long probably not not knowing that we have upside objectives up here they're still waiting for completion of targets and that's usually what's required before a market reverses is finishing an objective we haven't done that yet and now we've got a big giant heavy looking bear bar that just fell flat on its face if there were shorts who took this and they weren't short down here, didn't get trapped or anything, but if there were shorts who took this, they're probably going to be jumping ship above. Nobody's going to want to hang out given this context. It just doesn't make sense to want to be short yet. <laughs> and then it jumps higher with a big jump and that big rally to the upside. Now we're completing the candle gap objectives. Those are complete and we can kind of do a quick sweep to make sure there aren't any other ones. Uh, we've got a... That's the candle gap right there. There's no gapping there. There's no gapping. There. there might be gapping based on the next candle, depending on what happens, but that's all we have to work with. So right now it's kind of jobs done, right? All of the bulls just hit their major objectives. It's not that they're done holding longs and they'll stay long, but we're probably going to see a little bit more of a pullback. Buyers are taking profit now. And when you start completing those big candle gap objectives, that's where a lot of algos start dumping out too. So seeing another bear response here, wouldn't be a surprise. The context of the market is still bullish, just not up here. <laughs> it's, it's a little too expensive up here. Uh, so we need a bit more of a pullback. Plus it's 1020. We're starting to get into that time frame where we're getting that little bit of a morning reversal between, you know, 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, somewhere inside there. It's a few things that can definitely kind of play ball here. We have an inside bear bar. We saw what happened to the last time the inside bar formed, but there's also some candle gapping. We've got a little bit of candle gapping here to here showing that there's potential for upside objectives. That's the same way that we found this area. Uh, so if they can continue back to the upside, it would make sense that we're probably looking for that measured move completion or they're looking for that move up to get around uh, that candle gap level. 
Uh, so if we look at the candle gap level to the upside, it doesn't have to go very far. It's just back to the highs, 2350. But that's that one-to-one -one move to the upside that buyers are going to be gunning for. Um, now, because it's not very big, a lot of buyers might kind of be hesitant to buy this early. But realistically, man, this is a strong bull trend to the upside. And the last time we had a bear bar, it got dumped on. Now we've got another inside bear bar. I've got to assume buyers will probably give it a shot here, uh, looking for it to roll back to the upside. Now, in this case, it goes a little bit further down, and this isn't a good sign. I know it's a relatively small bar, but this is not what buyers wanted to see. They wanted to buy in, and they wanted to see it kind of like a washout, where it dipped down, they buy in, it pops back up, they get their targets, have everyone's happy, and you know the world's hunky-dory. But in this case, it moved down, and you can see the wick, it was initially up here. So the buyers who bought the, the close of that bear bar, or lower, they were in profit for a minute. And then it closed back down again. Now, if you're a long, and this is the first time that we've really seen this, I don't think longs are really going to get nervous here because the context is still okay. It's not pulling back too far. And if anything, when the bears come down to the low of that big bull bar or some of the support down here, like the previous trap shorts, we're probably going to see some support there as well. So not necessarily long, not necessarily short, but just kind of waiting to see what they're going to want to do around this 3310 area down to the, the sevens, because that's where the shorts got stuck. We've got, we've got another bear bar. Now this one is causing a little bit of a problem because this has now closed in the candle gapping. We did have candle gapping. It was still open over here, but now it's not right. They filled it. So that candle gapping is done. The buyers are starting to lose their strength. This is not what's happened before. This is the strongest string of bear bars that we've seen. And although we are seeing a little bit of a wick bounce off the lows of that candle, that's not really proving a whole lot to us yet. We still need a bit more info to see what they want to do. Are they holding? Maybe this is a trap loan. We get a strong bull bar. A strong bull bar will probably find some buyers in it. That's not it. <laughs> That's a really gross bear bar to the downside. So now we've got continuity to the bear side. We have an inside bar, inside bar, inside bar breakout. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> this was a strong trend to the upside and we were looking for an ABCD leg. What happened? Right? Where did the buyers go? Are they really trying to buy a little bit cheaper? Uh, maybe they want to try to get a trap underneath this low. Then we'll probably see a bull bar in here. Uh, but right now, we're actually doing the opposite of what we want to see. We've got bear candle gapping to the downside. So <laughs> now we've got some problems. The bears are looking for a little more continuation. Not much, but their objective is 275, and it doesn't have to go much further to fill that in. But realistically, they're showing strength. The buyers lost their strength while the sellers were gaining their strength. And that's the problem. Uh, because now, buyers are going to have a hard time trusting anything that shows up. It's going to be sell everything. Uh, the first pop that comes up, sell. Because we're probably going where? Back reverting to the mean. And the mean, in this case, would be the moving average. We're probably coming back to the moving average because that's what an average is. <laughs> we come back to it. We've diverted away from the mean too far. Now the market's kind of reverting back. It makes a lot of sense. So being a buyer here, contextually, seeing the speed picking up bears picking up it doesn't make sense it makes more sense to sell for continuation to see if they keep wanting to go down towards the moving average which is what they continue doing not by much but we're still seeing that little bit of follow through to the downside and now we have another bear oops another bear candle gap to the downside here to here so again we're forecasting a little bit further down now we're looking for downside objectives to 98.50 so down at 98.50 now, that's what we're waiting for to see if they can push down to that zone. And then once they get there, what do they do? Well, we're getting a little bit of a pause, but nobody in their right mind is going to want to buy the first move back up again, not after this strength. And the candle gapping is still open. Remember the last time they closed it. That's where the conviction kind of died off. This still has candle gapping to the downside. We've got a bull bar to the upside, but the candle gapping is still open open right it's still open that's a good sign this is a weak bear bar but the fact that they're leaving that gapping open is showing that they're at least trying to get something going yet trying to get back to that moving average maybe they get a little push another inside bar that makes it a little bit more difficult we're starting to lose candle gapping now we've got four bars stacked on top of each other we're getting a little bit sideways shorts we're expecting this to go further down a little bit faster it went to 3300 exact they were looking for a little bit more than that. So it hasn't finished the job. It's not pushing up, but 
it's not breaking down either. And now we're starting to see consolidation. A lot of traders might just choose to exit if it breaks above this bear bar or just exiting at least a partial position on the close of the bear bar. Just saying, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I've got something here, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll wait and see if it wants to go a little bit further. Bulls weak, more sideways action. If anything, this sideways action would tell us that if shorts are still interested, which by the way, candle gap is still open, uh, sellers will be looking to sell there as defense. That's a way that they can potentially try to get back in and reload to defend that gap, which is still not completed its objective. And now its objective is right at the moving average. Everything is starting to line up, right? It's all coming together now. We get a small inside bull bar. Every inside bar so far that's triggered has, aside from that very first one of the day on, uh, what was that bar, six, uh, has been a trap. So this bull bar going back into a zone where sellers are going to be trying to push back off of when we're not finding any follow through from the bulls and the bears are just taking a break, leaving candle gaps open. Sellers are waiting on that blue line and they're going to be waiting to try to push the market back down. It hits the blue line. I don't know if they would have been filled on that, but what did it do? Right after it tapped it, it immediately shot down, hit the EMA, and now we're seeing a bunch of wick down there. Now, it might not be done, but it really blew off that range. It is kind of an embodiment of that range. The body's really small, but the wick is way outside. Now we get a strong bar down, but this is the first time that the market has been able to close under the moving average after a gap up. A lot of traders will be buying this area. This is an algorithmic sinkhole where buyers are coming in by the boatload. So if we start seeing a lot of bullishness coming in here, we got to lay off the gas pedal on the shorts a little bit. This is starting to shift gears. And now looking at the time of day on the chart, we're going into 1120. So we're running out of a little bit of time too. This is where for me personally, I'd probably start wrapping up the day. We're usually done at around 11. Um, but that's kind of the idea of what I'm looking for is not necessarily uh looking at market psychology as, oh, get in here, get out here. Yes, it will tell you that, but it's reading it like a book, like a story. And you're trying to kind of create the story along the way to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Now, going back historically is a lot easier, which is why it's a great way to practice with, just like I'm doing here, going candle by candle by candle by candle. Uh, but if you want, you know, to get a little bit of, uh, you know, get your, get your teeth in a little bit more, doing it during live action is a really good way to do it, even if you're not necessarily trying to trade it, just narrating a story or even recording yourself narrating a story uh, of what's going on can be a huge factor in just kind of understanding the backbone of what the market is doing uh, to keep you on the right side of things. Hopefully you found it useful, interesting, entertaining. Uh, I know these candle by candles are always really fun and it's always interesting to see how the market ends up. But uh, overall, that's going to do it. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Don't forget to swing on over to SSFTG and sign up for that free three-day trial. And of course, always make sure, subscribe and thumbs up. And don't forget to click the notification bell icon because we go live almost every day, if not every day on YouTube. And if you don't have the notification bell icon on, you might just miss it. So for those of you who have that bell icon clicked and you're ready to rock and roll, we'll see you in the live stream a little bit later today. For the rest of you, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around and watching the video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.